Hello everyone, this is Britt Simon. Uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, the interview experience stories that I have on my website. This is an invaluable resource, it will help you through your interview and is really well worth you reading. Let me explain. Okay, uh, so there are a number of interview experience stories on my website. I'll give you the link in a few moments. Um, but uh, if you go through the interview experience stories that have, have been added to my website since about late 2015, you'll see that over, overall the experience is roughly similar between every story. Uh, there's a pattern to the interviews um, and it doesn't matter which embassy we're talking about, they're all roughly the same. Um, so by all means you can go and have a look at uh, hundreds of, of experience stories that people have kindly added to, to my website. But as I say, there is a sort of an overall theme, a pattern uh, that you can understand and you can be successful in your interview, which is obviously what we want. OK, so let's just have a look at, uh, I'm going to show you some example stories. Um, the first one here I've chosen, I've chosen three stories from random just to show you um, kind of, you know, what happens here, what, what goes on. And these stories are all directly added to my website um, by readers of my blog. Uh, and in each case, they are free to, to write whatever they want to write, whether it's a good story or a bad story. Uh, I I'm, I'm encourage people to add their stories there because it's so invaluable, so helpful for other people. So in this particular case, Nora uh, fro went to her interview in Nairobi, um, and she describes her journey to, uh, to, to the interview, as it were. Um, starts at 6 a.m. in the morning, the gates open at 6.30, etc., now, there, there's always a security co security concern for U.S. embassies around the world, so there was um, security applied, um, and she went through security. Again, you'll see that in, in other stories as well. Um, and then you can see uh, that Nora was asked to provide um, some of her documents. Um, she was there's basically two steps. Generally speaking, the documents are collected first, um, and uh, and at that sort of time as well, they ask for the payment, three hundred and thirty dollars uh, per person. Um, so generally speaking, this is uniform from story to story. Uh, the documents are presented, whatever documents need to be collected, etc., the basic documents. That doesn't mean they're the only documents that the CO might ask for, but these are the generally uh, you know, standardized ones, if you like. Um, then there's a second period, um, a second interview, uh, which is before the CO, the consular officer. Um, Often the staff members that ask for the documents in the beginning are local employees and the consular officers are generally uh, American citizens um, who have been posted at these various embassies around the world. It's not always like that, but that's very often the case. Um, you can ask for uh, translation, translators to be available, um, but generally speaking these interviews are conducted in English. Um, so even if you're not 100% confident of your English skills, it's good to be able to answer to the CO in English. Um, so if you've studied some of these questions, you should be able to um, you know, go through that. Um, so you can see then there, when, when Nora was in front of the CEO, she was asked some questions. Um, the questions are simple. They're not designed to catch you out. They're sometimes looking to confirm aspects of what you've written in the, in the form. Um, they are often uh, interested in where you'll be staying in the USA or what your plan is uh, for once you get to the USA. That's a very common theme. Uh, they want to know that you've got a realistic plan for how to survive in, in America. Um, and so in this particular case, uh, there were several questions about the sponsor for Nora. Um, and, uh, and then uh, right at the end, this particular um, story uh, had a slight glitch in that Nora hadn't prepared her I-134. Um, and so uh, she later had to follow up with that document. 
Um, that caused Nora a delay. I'm happy to say that uh, after a week that um, that case was issued. Um, but uh, but originally this particular interview ended in 221G form being handed over, which is uh, AP or administrative processing. Um, so try and make sure you you go to the uh, to the interview fully prepared for everything. Try and remember that they will be asking you things about how you'll survive in the USA, and they will be asking you other questions as well, which are uh, about the documents you've already provided. Okay, so that's the first story. Uh, next story was uh, one I chose from Sydney in Australia. Um, same sort of thing. Um, early morning interview in this case. Uh, some documents are collected, and they ask for payment from um, you know from the cashier. So in this case, uh, the um, the payment was made in local currency. So it was five hundred dollars for a single person, uh, which was five hundred Australian dollars that was transferred. You know, that was the amount needed for three hundred and thirty dollars. Um, then some sort of localized stuff here that uh, there's a package that they uh, need to provide an express post package um, that's that's common in Sydney um, and uh, uh, this uh, Lily is quite a character by all by all accounts um, so she's uh, written a fairly colorful um, experience here but anyway there's some nerves there during which she was trying not to vomit um, and then uh, Lily went through a number of questions with the CO. The CO was asking about education, how old she, wa she was, etc., uh, what work she's done, uh, just confirmation of, um, of, the, um, of the education um, and what, what, you know, what things she's done prior to that. And uh, in this particular case, Lily is an actress, so um, that, uh, <laughs> uh, that um, seems to have caused some, uh, some hilarity. But anyway, very simply, this interview was over in one or two minutes. Um, and so it really is, you know, a bit of an anticlimax for a lot of people. They're expecting to be grilled for 20 minutes, half an hour or something. But these interviews are all pretty brief, frankly. Um, it's unusual to have an interview over 10 minutes. Um, 20 minute interviews are very unusual. Um, so, you know, quite a lot of these interviews are just done in the first uh, couple of minutes. Um, so, you know, bear that in mind. It, it's a very quick, simple process. No difficult questions. Nothing, no need to prepare. If you can't answer these questions um, without any preparation, then it really indicates that you've not been entirely honest about what you're planning to say. If you are answering from honesty and somebody asks you a question, you just respond. You just respond honestly. You tell someone the truth. It takes no preparation to tell the truth. Okay, so please bear that in mind. That's one of the reasons I always insist on people telling the, telling the truth to me and uh, accepting that truth is important in this process. Okay, last, um, last experience story here. Uh, this one was Omar in Saudi Arabia, um, fairly detailed one here. Um, Omar goes into detail about the documents that were uh, provided. This list, I, I don't like giving this list of documents and saying, yeah, that's all the all the documents you want uh, or need. Um, it will vary per person. So I really ask people to make sure they read the instructions. But in this case, this list is a very good list of, um, of documents with uh, pointing out that you should be providing an original and a copy of the original. If you want to get your birth certificate back, you need to pass uh, the original to the CO, but ask them to keep the copy, right, so that you get your original document back. And um, and you may need a translation of your documents. Um, your documents will need to be translated if they're not in the local uh, language of the embassy. So if, for example, you're interviewing in... Uh, in Paris and you have documents in German, those documents will need to be translated. They can either be translated into French because it's Paris or into English. Now, I always recommend people to translate documents into English because that's more universally useful uh, and will be useful for you when you get to America. Um, but, uh, but they could be in either of those two languages, either in French or in English for an interview in Paris. Uh, similarly, if you went for an interview in Germany uh, and you had documents in German, no need to translate those. If you have other documents that are in, let's say, Italian or French, you will need to translate, translate those into, um, into German uh, or into English. 
Okay, so then um, uh, Omar goes through. He provides the uh, the documents, the standard documents, including an I-134. Um, he's paid $660 in fees, waited for three hours to be called. Um, about 4.30 p.m., he goes through with the CEO a number of questions here. Nothing particularly um, startling there. Uh, what's Omar doing? He's mechanical engineering, um, and you know nothing particularly um, unusual there about that. It's just a sort of a, a friendly interview, not such a big deal. Uh, and within a couple of days, uh, Omar noticed his case was showing AP, and then it switched from AP to issued. That, by the way, is a very normal, common thing. Uh, after an interview, quite often a case will switch to AP for around about a day or maybe two days and then switch to issued. Um, it's just something to do with the system and how they're ordering the, uh, the visa. So don't freak out and panic when you see AP immediately after what you thought was a successful interview. Um, so as Omar, Omar uh, suggests here, um, prepare, prepare, and then over-prepare, right? Great advice there. Um, it really is important to, uh, to get all your documents together. If you do that, the questions are easy, the documentation's right there for them, and they'll give you an easy time. If you're telling the truth and you meet the education requirements or you can prove that you meet the work experience requirements, um, there really is very little reason for you to be um, disqualified or denied at interview. Uh, these are the easiest uh, interviews you've ever seen. Um, so uh, if you want to read more stories like that, please go ahead and um, click this link. I'll, I'll make this link clickable. I'll uh, include the link in my description below. Uh, and you know, you'll come to this page, interview experience stories, and there are literally hundreds of stories that have been added there over uh, the past four years. And you can see, you can search for stories at the embassy you're concerned with, but you can read a lot of uh, a lot of uh, experience stories, and you'll see uh, time after time the questions that are asked are not difficult. Uh, the interviews are short. The preparation is similar. Uh, the fees are always the same. It really is is as, as simple as that. No matter where you are in the world, um, it really is a very sort of common experience. Okay, so I hope that was helpful for you. Click the link below to go to see that uh, interview experience stories. Um, please let me know if you like this video. Just click like below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Um, uh, doing so helps me and, and will help you get more of this sort of information. I uh, hope that's helpful for you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.